Hello, everyone. Let me see if I can pull up the chat window in case anyone is actually here today. If I'm not seeing anything from you guys, please send me a tweet so that I can follow up on that. Because this is going to be one of those where I have to edit out like the first 10 minutes, I guess. So if I don't see anyone popping in here in the next few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and move on with a few channel reviews today. For those of you who are not in my Facebook group for Crafty Creators, I have been experiencing some health issues. So I've kind of been a little MIA here lately. And... Um, I mean, you know, I'm still trying to post off and on and everything, but I am feeling better. It's just I've got to go to the dreaded doctor's offices. Those aren't any fun, you know. But I wanted to, instead of skipping today's stream, just kind of take it easy today. I have absolutely no makeup on. My hair is a mess. So that's why you get to look at my screen today. <laughs> I didn't want to scare anybody to death um, if you show up here live or uh, if you happen to be uh, watching this as a replay later. So now I have the pop-up window up, but I am going to move on to other elements of my screen. I hope you will be able to see them. I'm currently on the Handmade Crafty Creators website. So I just wanted to put this up as a, a little reminder. For anyone that is a, an artist, a performer, a crafter, and you may uh, create art with your hands, or maybe you're a performer, you sing, or you act, whatever, and you are uh, posting videos of what you do, feel free to come over and check out the group. We have a Facebook group, which I'll click on right now. Here's our Facebook group, and this is something that I try to have daily posts on with different types of content, like yesterday was Top 10 Tuesday, and I've got some filming um, tips that I found for you guys. I try to do a different topic every day, and then we have uh, on Saturdays the Sparkly Showcase where you get to put whatever links you have for your most recent videos or just your YouTube channel if you want to. Then we have Support Sundays. In particular, what we've been doing the last several Sundays is just to play the uh, Handmade Crafty Creators playlist with everyone's videos in it. Just try to give people some watch time and stuff. But if you have any actual support type questions, like maybe you've got a tech issue or um, you just want to get support from your fellow crafty creators in the handmade niche and whatnot, you have maybe a... Uh, uh, you're struggling with inspiration for creating your art or you're just wanting to ask some sort of question in general that's support related, you can do that as well instead of uh, playing the playlist. So it's whatever you want to do for Sundays. But I do have those posted here on our Facebook group. Feel free to put in a request to join that. It's actually Video Crafty Creators. I'll highlight that there and see if you can see that, the Facebook group. The link is there on the YouTube channel as well, which I believe, let me click on the YouTube channel. Yeah, so over here you'll see there's the Facebook logo on the right hand side of your screen. We also have the Twitter, the Instagram, um, the website is there, and the Google Plus. I'm not really that active on Google Plus because I just despise it so much, but I do but I do try to post things and, and reshare and all that stuff. So if you're active there, you'll see some crafty creator stuff. Uh, here is our Twitter, which I need to refresh the screen so I can see the tweets. And if you uh, tweet something and you want to have it retweeted by me, be sure that you use the, the hashtag crafty creators and I'll be able to retweet that for you. There's our Facebook group again. So let me get to the Google Plus and then I'll move on to what I wanted to do today. That is the Google Plus for Crafty Creators. Not a whole, whole lot going on there, but I do try to put the posts, especially the ones that have the tips and everything in there and any kind of updates that we might have. All right, so let's get off of that. 
that's our website again. The, uh, again, a reminder on the website, we do have a forum and a blog. The forum you have to log into if you want to have conversations with your fellow group members, um, depending on whatever craft it is that you pursue. The blog, you don't have to have a login, though, so you can just read whatever uh, posts that I have there. And I do try to keep that updated with interesting content. Anything that might be helpful for you, I just did a segment where you can uh, use a PayPal card reader to get paid at like craft fairs or art shows or e even in your classroom if you teach uh, maybe at a community center or something and the students have to pay you directly. So if they don't bring cash and you're not going to accept checks, I would recommend you not do that. Then you can accept the PayPal payment. If you have a square reader, you can also use that as well. So this this post here gives a little bit of information kind of comparing it. So you can make up your mind if you don't already have some sort of a reader. So I'm going to go ahead and click off the Google and get onto YouTube here. Let me see if I can find this chat window again because it's disappeared. I'm going to type something in. Hey, I'm going to give it a like over here on the YouTube. Hello, YouTube screen. So let me come over here to just regular good old YouTube. And I wanted to show, I'm going to click here for Crafty Creators YouTube channel. And I just wanted to show some of the information, some of the issues that I've, I've been seeing here lately with the lack of social media icons. I know I mentioned it in this video down here where I'm talking about how to create your custom URL. But I just I noticed there's a huge amount of people still not taking advantage of putting their social media links up here. Now, if you don't really use social media, you know, that's OK. But I completely understand that a lot of people despise social media and, you know, look at it as a time waster. But it can be a valuable tool for those that want to be able to get their message out to whatever audience you have. If you're already creating art in public places and displaying things or teaching whatever your medium is then you want to have a platform available, at least one, so that your students can get in contact with you. Uh, maybe they can bounce ideas off of you or they can show you their progress on their own projects. Um, maybe they just want to speak to you in general or maybe they're, they're your fans of your art and they just want to keep up with whatever projects that you're currently working on. Um, something that is a pretty cool aspect for us as creators that have art studios, um, crafting areas and whatnot, you can put uh, post pictures as far as whatever your current project is that you're working on. Maybe you have reorganized your space. You know, those things are very interesting, not only to your fans, your followers, or your students, but they're also very interesting to your fellow creators because that might inspire them on how to change up their location, their crafting space, their, their art area. So you might want to consider doing that. And that is where the visual part of social media is so important because especially a platform on Instagram, Pinterest, those two in particular are more visual and they have the opportunity to really snag a large audience for you if you're interested in, you know, having that kind of maybe networking opportunity or outreach, whatever it is that your your goal is. If you're someone that is just scared to death of being on social media, then you probably don't even have a YouTube channel, I would imagine. But I don't know. I mean, there could be some that, <laughs> that have a channel and you just post your tutorials and you never respond to people that might, you know, make a comment on your tutorials. I would advise, uh, no matter how shy you are or, you know, whatever the situation is that keeps you from wanting to participate in social media. If you are here in this group, or maybe you're not even in this group, but you are a crafty creator and you have a YouTube channel, if someone leaves a comment for you on one of your videos, then you definitely need to respond to those comments, regardless of whether you're on social media or not. It's just, you know, a respectful thing to do. Also, 
it's it's a way for you to grow your audience on your YouTube platform in general because that people other people that come to see your videos will see how reactive and responsive you are to comments that are being made on your videos and it's just more friendly to do I also use what I call the sundown law <laughs> that is um, something in in my old banking uh, career that we used to do if someone had a question for us or they I, they had a comment that uh, I felt like needed to have a further explanation or response added on to that we would also we would always try to get back to that person within that same business day before sundown so you might want to use that philosophy if you're not already I know a lot of crafty people are, are you know we're really busy we've got a lot of different projects going on and we might not have time to get to you the same day that you leave a comment or whatnot but always try to do it by the very next morning if possible you don't ever want to just not respond to people because it's just respectful to uh, make sure that you comment even if it's just to say hey thanks for watching so this is our crafty creators channel here with some videos on it and as far as what i've tried to do i've tried to create several different playlists in addition to the main playlist that i have for handmade crafty creators channel support this is the biggie i'll click on it right now um, this is where i'm putting everyone's videos that i find uh, either through my own manual searches or someone reaches out to me and they're a crafty creator i'll go to their channel to look and see what they're doing and then i'll snag a video of theirs as well and you can see we have 288 videos in this list already um, not very many of these people that are in my list actually are part of the Crafty Creators group, and that is okay. I'm just trying to support people that make crafts and do um, performance art and things like that. Because regardless of whether they're, you know, participating here in this group, I want to be supportive of them if I value what what it is that they're creating. And I do actually go and try to... to um, pull up small channels as well that are creating some artwork or whatever so that is our main list and then whoops let me go backwards when you go back to the main page you'll see that I have other playlists as well and this is where I am doing things by categories so I have filming and editing channel tips um, where you get Marketing Mondays, Photography and Video Art, you get your Wavelength Wednesdays, which is what this is today. Wavelength Wednesday is just an opportunity for you to be able to talk, um, any kind of support issues you might have. If we have a topic, which today I'm, I'm going to be doing some channel reviews and stuff, um, you know, you might want to have some sort of a specific topic discussion. That's kind of what we do on the Wavelength Wednesdays. Um, YouTube channel tips, then you have by actual art category like your digital art, drawing, painting, performance, beading, crochet, all different types of things. There's several different playlists here that you can check out, not just uh, the main um, checklist here. So let me go, or I'm sorry, playlist, not checklist. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go back here to the main page. That is your Crafty Creators page, right? So what I wanted to do, um, I have a few people in mind that I want to check out the channel. And one of the very first is going to be Stacy. She is in our Crafty Creators group. And she has a channel called Crafty Mommy 85. So let's see if I can find her. There she is. There is Miss Stacy. So here we are at Miss Stacy's Crafty Mommy 85 channel. And yay, Stacy, you're almost 2,000. Yay! We have a banner here at the top. And that's another thing that I've noticed on several people's um, channels. They don't actually have a banner yet. That's very important for you to create a banner. If you go to the help um, options in YouTube, they give you a YouTube channel template or channel art template that you can manipulate in Photoshop if you're familiar with Photoshop. If not, you just look for the dimensions for whatever artwork that you want to use and you can use a free photo editing software like GIMP or um, I go to PZAP a lot. That's P-I-Z-A-P. -P. You can also use PicMonkey. 
I mean, there's several different photo editing softwares that you can use if you don't want to fool around with Photoshop. But I do like using the YouTube channel art template in Photoshop because then I know all of the different views, whether it's a mobile phone or your desktop or a tablet, I'm going to have my artwork showing correctly in all of those different modes because that template actually shows me where that is going to hit on all those different devices. So it's very handy. Uh, again, though, if you if you don't have Photoshop, you can still make it work. Um, I will have to say for Crafty Mommy, although I am a huge fan of sparkles, I'm telling you, I love sparkles. Um, Crafty Mommy 85 gets lost. The title here in white gets lost on this pink glitter um, template or channel art. I'm sorry. I, if one, it's cursive. And so these tiny little lines here are very difficult to, to stand out and pop. And then also um, the stroke that is around the white, it looks like there's a little bit of a black stroke around there. It's not thick enough to really help that white pop out. So a suggestion I would make, Stacy, if you are listening to this, is to um, redo this part right here where you've got your, your name and either increase the outline, which is the stroke, maybe increase it um, one or two. If you did not create an outline, because it does look like there's a, a little tiny black outline there. If you did not, though, and this is just how it's showing up here on my computer screen, go and create an outline around this font if you're wanting to maintain this um, cursive. Now, if you want to change that, then I would suggest because you've got these block type of moons and stars, um, they're very bold, in other words. I would change my font maybe, um, I don't know, let's see if we can do, I'm trying to think, I think Rebel is a font that might look better because it is a little bit more wide. It's still cursive, but it's a little bit more wide and has kind of a more, um, an more bold look to it that might match these moons and stars a little bit better and it will be easier to see here on your background also i do notice it looks like this glitter background you have what it's actually got a watermark on it from adobe stock photos <laughs> so you might want to just change out your glitter background altogether for a different one that's a royalty free that does not have the watermark on it because that's also taking away from the Crafty Mommy 85 and being able to see that. So with that being said, let me pull up this chat window again here to see if I've got anyone. Oh, hello, Janita. Loving it. How are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. I hope you're still here. I hope I've not been missing you this whole time. I'm just going over some, some channel review stuff here. And um, you know what? I'm actually going to try to retweet this to crafty mommy she might be with the babies because she has a lot she has a lot going on with with them um, some little ones at home but let me try to do this to let her know Okay, there we go. So, Janita, if you're still here, how are you doing? Are you feeling well today? I hope so. I decided I was going to do some channel reviews for some crafty, crafty peeps today because I'm still not feeling all that great, so I didn't want to put my face on the camera today. <laughs> Oh, it looks like I may have I may have lost you, Janita. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I missed you, hon. All right. So going back to Miss Stacy, uh, like I was saying earlier about the the stock watermark back here, that kind of distracts from your Crafty Mommy 85. So go and look for some royalty free gra um, graphics. You can check out 
there's several different sites. I know that I get a lot of things from, um, well, actually, PZAP does have a lot of royalty-free graphics. So you can go to PZAP and then uh, select the, the border size that you want to make, which for you would be the YouTube sizing. And then uh, they have, let me, let me just pull that up while you all are not here, but maybe if you watch it in the replay. Okay, so it's pizap.com, P-I-Z-A-P.com. And if I wanted to do like a create or design, I just click on the design and then it has a lot of templates already created here that you can select, which is quite helpful. You can do, uh, you know, Facebook and all that stuff. They have one here for YouTube channel art. Now I will caution you, sometimes PZAP does not get this updated every time that YouTube changes its parameters. So just keep that in mind whenever you're creating this. But I just clicked on YouTube channel art and then you can add a background image and then it gives you several different options. You can pull it from your computer. If you have something on your Facebook or Instagram, if you have something in your Dropbox, which I don't know if anyone uses Dropbox. I love it because I can pull an image from my computer, put it into Dropbox, and then I can access it if I need to post it for any kind of um, social media. You can also pull up your um, PZAP backgrounds. Picasa is another good one and Flickr is a good one. A Google search, you're kind of on borderline territory of having watermarked or non-royalty free images. So I would stick with PZAP backgrounds or anything that says free, excuse me, uh, royalty free. So here you've got all different sorts of backgrounds that you can choose. I mean, it's not going to maybe be the pink glittery, but you do have another option if you're using the app on your phone to be able to access um, free images and stuff. So just keep that in mind and, and look for anything that says royalty free. But let's say you wanted to do, oh, I don't know, maybe this, this one here. So once you select it, ooh, gosh, that's got a bunch of hearts and stuff. <laughs> but you see it fills it in for the background. And then you can finish making your border and everything. Um, if you were going to add your text in here, you click your text. You go to start, you know, writing whatever you want. Crafty Mommy 85. And you have the ability to change it. Now, if you are upgraded, I, I have the Pro option because I use PZAP so much, then you can click over here to your pro pack and be able to use a lot of different fonts in here that may be a little bit more fancy. Um, fancy is not necessarily where you want to go with that all the time. I mean, I kind of get a little bit fancy in my stuff just because, <laughs> but you can choose a lot of different things that are simple, but effective. So whatever you might want to do, I would stick with something that is more of a like a blocky font because you're wanting to use the moons and stars that you have. So I don't know. There's all kinds of things here, but I have fonts on my computer. And if I wanted to actually upload my own font, I would be going into my Photoshop or I'd use uh, pick monkey or something like that in order to be able to do it. So let's just pretend, let's say stencil, see how that looks. You don't have to have a glow. But now see how this gets lost on this pink and there's some white in there. If I wanted to do a background in this particular option, I could do like a background banner and that is behind my words here. Or if I had the flash operational on here, which I don't know why this put me on the classic PZAP instead of the, um, the update. I forget what they call it. PZAP 2.0, I think that has the ability to create an outline around your letters. So if I wanted to do that, I could do the background by clicking that and then selecting whatever color I want. Or I could come in here and do a glow, which I don't like, you know, I don't like that glow. But if I wanted to say pick a really deep pink so that it kind of blends in but still has a pop, or if I wanted to do something for Halloween and maybe do, you know, some kind of weird crazy green, that obviously doesn't look good. But you get the the idea you can do that. You can also change your font colors. You know, maybe you do black. There's all sorts of different things here. Um, the font is a big one, though. I would say even this Comica 
is a pretty good option. You can make this stretch out if you want. You can change the sizing here to whatever your size is. But that gives you an option there if you want to play, kind of play around with that. But I would suggest um, definitely get a better, either if you're not going to change your font out to something that's more blocky to match the moon and stars that you have, definitely uh, change this to where you have a, a deeper black outline around your Crafty Mommy 85 so it's easier to see on top of that pink glitter or change out the background of the pink glitter so you don't have this watermark. All right, but Crafty Mommy does have her, her social media icons. Yay, Stacy! yay. Let me pull up the chat box here to be sure I can still see people because I think my chat box just died on me. There it is. Hey, Deb, how are you? Hope you're feeling well. Deb just changed over to Stampin' Up. She is going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff. And um, I <laughs> I love stamping, but because I'm so into my jewelry making and everything, I never get time to use my stamps. Thanks, Deb, for stopping in. And Janita, yay! I'm so happy. I'm just going over Stacy's channel here. So I just talked about her graphics and her banner a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to go on over here to her social medias. I'm going to try to move this chat window to the left. If I lose the chat window and y'all are still trying to talk to me, um, I do apologize. I'm trying to get it to cooperate, but it's wanting to be a little bit difficult. You feel that way lately about your jewelry making? Deb makes beautiful jewelry, guys, and um, she's kind of like me. She dabbles in a little bit of both, um, but the paper crafting and everything, man, she's really good at. When I do that, I have to be in a mood to make cards and everything, and that's why I hardly ever get a chance to use my stamps and all that stuff. Now, when I did this craft fair in the, uh, the Valentine's and the Christmas craft fairs, I really got a chance to make a lot of cards and everything. I still, because of time constraints, did not get a chance to use a bunch of stamps. You really have to have you know, the mood to want to stamp and color it up and make it all beautiful and everything. And I like to use embossing powders too. So I really have to be in a mood specifically for that. Otherwise I'm, I'm making jewelry or I'm over here marketing my stuff online or I'm talking to you guys, <laughs> but Deb is really talented in, in all of her stuff. And I love her, her jewelry. She's got a lot of different videos on there. We'll, we'll check her out as well. So back to Miss Stacy. Um, I'm going to click on her Facebook here. She has her Facebook loaded. And this, she actually has a Crafty Mommy 85 page. She's using the same banner. And it looks a little bit better because of the way that it, it appears on Facebook. However, you can see it says a sto Adobe Stock. That watermark is right behind her Crafty Mommy 85 banner. So that is something you want to get rid of. So you probably have to change this graphic here to a different pink and sparkly banner. Um, just check anything that's royalty free so that you can get rid of that watermark because you don't want to have that distracting from your Crafty Mommy 85. But she has her posts and things here on her Facebook page. And let's get back over to her YouTube. She has a Twitter and she's using her same banner here for her Twitter. But again, you can see this Adobe stock watermark that's behind everything is, is very distracting. She has all kinds of goodies here on her Twitter. She retweets all the time and posts. She has a Pinterest. Oh, looks like my computer's wanting to, to get crazy. Either that or it might not, her Pinterest page might not be online. Let's let's look at that again. Let's try that one more time. You never know. Okay, so Stacy, you might want to check the link here for your, your Pinterest page. It's got um, so crafty C over here, Pinterest.com. And for some reason your page isn't wanting to come up. So if maybe there's supposed to be something after the so crafty C then fix that and then re-upload your link on your YouTube channel. And then her Instagram, CraftyMommy85. You can see she's got a whole bunch of good stuff here. Man, her, her Instagram makes me hungry all the time. Look at all that stuff. Oh, man, that looks good. I'm going to put some, put some extra little 
parts on here. <laughs> ah, wait a minute. I'm not logged in there. Okay, I'll have to go in there on my phone, Stacy. Sorry about that. All right, let me get the chat, the chat window pulled back up. <laughs> oh, thank you, Deb. I'll have to rewatch. I miss how you add the social media links to your YouTube banner. Well, I didn't actually go in there yet, um, Deb, but I do have that on the the uh, previous video that I did for the custom URL. So let's go back over here. Whoops. Oh my goodness, where am I at? So here at Crafty Creators, if you can see that, this video, the how to create or change your custom URL, I talk about the social media links and everything there. Um, you just go into your settings and, and fix that. Uh, if I could get into mine right here, I might try to do that. Yep, okay. So customize your channel. Maybe it it's thinking about it. It's thinking, it's thinking real hard. You can go into your customization of your channel, and then you have a lot of different areas here. Excuse me. Oh, I'm hiccuping. Your about section is where all of these different sections are that have the little pencil that you can update, you can put an email in, you can make sure you have a good description and all that stuff. But down here at the bottom is where you can click the pencil and add your social media links. And it will show the first five that you put on here. I mean, you can do all sorts of different social medias and stuff, um, all sorts of different links, but it'll only show the, the top five. So make sure whichever one is the most important to you, you have listed first and then, you know, go in priority down because it'll show the first five. Then once you have all that in there, you should see all of your little icons and then they should be up here on your little channel. Yay! But yeah, I go over that um, some more too in, in that custom URL video, Deb. Hopefully that might be of benefit for you. Okay, let me get back over here to Miss Stacy. I keep losing this chat window, so sorry. There we go. <laughs> Well, I guess Miss Stacy is busy with the baby or she's at work or something because I tweeted to her and I, I don't see her in here yet. If she's on here, I am so sorry because I don't see your name popping up here, Stacy. All right. So there is Miss Stacy. She has the banner, which we talked about earlier. And then in her about section, I know she's already got some social medias because that's, you know, shown up here in the top. But there they are again. Now, all she's saying here in her description is she's a mommy who loves all arts and crafts. This channel is all about craft tutorials, hauls, and tips. So that gives you, uh, you know, a basic idea there. If you wanted to go a little bit more in depth, Stacy, you might also then want to talk about the merch that you have. I know she created a, a shop where she's got some t-shirts and things that she is wanting to promote for, for different um you know, ideas and topics and stuff, not just craft related. So you might want to talk a little bit about that or at the very least, make sure that's one of the links that you pop into your, your social medias, um, your area down here for your links. But you might want to beef this up a little bit more here in your description. I mean, you know, it gets the basic idea across. So that's excellent. So there are different things here that she has video wise and let's click her playlist area to see. Yep. She's got a bunch of playlists. So that's good. Yay, Stacy. She has DIY and crafts tutorials. She's got YouTube collabs. She does the, um, the hauls and shout outs. She's got, uh, I am a creator support. She's got all sorts of different playlists here and they actually make sense because hers is a craft channel and she does hauls as well. So that makes sense. Yay, Stacy. That's Miss Crafty Mommy 85. So I um, want to just go on one more thing here. Let's look at the videos to be sure. I notice sometimes like if you hit the home for a channel, a lot of times here you won't see any content and with Stacy, she's got her set up to show just her uploads and her popular uploads here. Stacy, I would get into my settings and also pop in like a playlist. So let's say you have a support playlist. I believe I saw the, the, I am a creator over here. Um, yeah. So let's say you want this. I am a creator playlist to be 
showing up here on your home, then make sure you add a section when you go into your customize your channel and add that section to show up here on your home page. So you'll have your uploads, your popular uploads, which is your own videos, but then you'll also have whatever playlist that you want. You can also set that up to where you have several different playlists showing up here. So maybe, you know, you want to have your DIY, you want to have your tutorial, you want to have your cards playlist showing up here on your home channel. That way people kind of get an idea, well, what kind of crafts does she make? <laughs> So, you know, you might want to do that. You might want to consider that. But otherwise, that looks great, Stacy. Great job, Crafty Mommy 85. All right, let me pop into the chat. Let me see here. All right, so since Deb is here, let's go see if I can find Deb. Deb, go to channel. Let's go visit Deb Hook. Is it Hook or Hauk? Let me know, Deb. I, I don't want to mispronounce it. Let's go see Deborah. All right, Deb. So here we've got her crafty cottage. Now, when I'm looking at Deb, and yay, Deb is over the 1K. Yay! Debra, so happy for you. She has 1,450 subscribers. She has a really nice channel and it has a lot of beading and card making and just several different things in here that you all will enjoy if you're into crafts and stuff. I will say this is the home tab here. So when, when a person first comes to your channel and they just see uploads here on the home page, they don't see any kind of playlist. Um, they don't see any sort of like recommendation or popular upload or whatever. They might think, hmm, this is all she has because they might not go and click on the videos or the playlist. So here is your opportunity to go in and um, your customized channel, set up sections to where you can display particular playlists on your home page and jazz it up a little bit with more than just the uploads because the uploads are whatever you are popping in there in chronological order. And you might want to display something, you know, a little bit different um, in order to get people to watch a targeted playlist if they're only just landing on your home page. So now let's click on her playlists and see what she has there. She has liked videos. These are the ones that she's created. Her D stash, paper crafting, stampin' up, and paper pumpkin. Monthly kits. Girls just want to have sun collab, Christmas in July. And then she has playlists of other people that she has saved. So something here, Miss Deb, I would um, actually go in and create playlists more so of your videos and have additional sections down here. So like if you do um, a specific series, let's say maybe in your Stampin' Up! Uh, videos and things that you're going to be uploading, or maybe you already have several, you can group them all together and create that as a playlist. So let's say you were doing, uh, I don't know, let's just use an example of a sunflower card right? And maybe you've done it as a series or a collab with other people or whatnot, and you have maybe two or three videos. And all of those have the topic centered around a sunflower stamping. Then put that into a playlist of that title and put, you know, showcase that playlist here in this area on your playlist screen by going into your customized channel and um, creating that as a section, just like you would for your home page here. Uh, that's just an example. I have no idea what it is that you might want to actually showcase, but I would do that because right here you're just having a general created playlist that somebody could just kind of scroll through this way and they might not want to click on it. Um, yeah, so that's as far as it goes. It's just two or actually one little scroll on the air arrow there. So you might want to do that. And then something else I noticed these thumbnails, you might want to change how you're doing your thumbnails. So on your um, de-stashing, instead of it being like uh, you've got paper pads, 
all of this looks like paper pads and inks. Instead of having that black and white text only, you might want to have a picture of, you know, say if it's five paper pads that you're destashing, have those kind of fanned out together and that take a picture of that and let that be your thumbnail. That way it's more visually enticing to someone that might want to click on that video versus taking the time to read the black and white text. You might want to try that out. Um, and then it looks like you've got good thumbnails on all the other stuff here that I'm seeing. You've got the girls just want to have sun. That's, that's cute, by the way. I like that. You've got that. That's really cute. Oh, I think I just missed something. Oh, you're welcome, Deb. I hope this is helpful. I don't know. I mean, of course, this is just my opinion, too. So <laughs> you take it with a grain of salt, girl. Um, you may have some other types of videos in here that I'm just not able to see unless I click specifically on your videos. And that is where a lot of us get in trouble because they just assume or many of us just assume, well, hey, you know, if someone lands on our homepage and they either like the name of our channel or they may like the first five things that show as an upload, then they're just going to go ahead and click on our videos tab and then go scrolling through, you know, what, are, however many videos that we have. Well, if you have a, an old channel that has, you know, hundreds or even thousands of videos, people are not going to do that. So that's where playlists are very important and your thumbnails are very important as well and I know um, through my marketing background a lot of YouTube videos that they, they do a lot better if they have a visual thumbnail sort of like um, going to Instagram or Pinterest you know you're you're looking for that visual interest and you do have text involved you know like here the, the Stampin' Up! News you've got this is just text but maybe if you do another Stampin' Up! News, maybe have um, a, a picture of like a, a typewriter or like a news bulletin or something that makes sense using clip art in that way and then have it say Stampin' Up! News so that it's more visually enticing, but it also gets, gets the idea across. Um, but you've got all of these wonderful videos here. And if someone is lazy... <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, they're just scanning by very quickly to see what kind of crafts that you offer. They might by bypass your channel altogether um, if they are just seeing a bunch of text and they don't take the time to click on the videos. So that would be that would be my suggestion. I just love all the colors, though, that you do have on these these thumbnails that you've created. You've got some really awesome projects in here, Deb. Very beautiful. Ah, kitty cat. I love this one. Um, I can't play any of these videos, obviously, because I would I would be in trouble. So I just want to suggest to you guys to check her channel out. Um, I'm coming up here on 1.30, so it looks like I'm just going to have these two as far as the craft channel reviews for Crafty Mommy 85 and Deb Deborah. I don't know if your name is Deborah. It might just be Deb. I'm sorry, Deb. <laughs> I keep calling you Deborah. <laughs> Don't be mad. Um, as far as Deb's banner, now I will have to say it is a little bit blurry on my computer. I love the colors, though. I love the little butterflies. And to me, it looks like the butterflies, um, they're a little bit bu blurry, but they look like they are kind of like a stamped butterfly or a, they're supposed to be some sort of a linen textured butterfly. Um, it's a, a little bit blurry. So the 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 pixelization in that viewing might need to be adjusted a little bit as far as using that YouTube channel template. If you have Photoshop, if you don't, then just make sure that you pull up the proper um, design proportions there in whatever free editing software that you've got, like it, you know, PZAP or GIMP or whatever it is that you use um, to make sure that you can resize that accordingly. So it won't be so blurry i mean it's not bad now this label here for your crafty cottage that is pretty blurry and just like crafty mommy it had um the issue of where it didn't pop out because of the coloring behind it so here if you if you can recreate this 
and whatever you used to make it before, put a white outline around the words, the text. You've got it nice and bold so it's easy to read. It just looks like it kind of blends a little bit too much into the black because there's nothing to make it pop around the outside of it. So you could do like a thin uh, white line. I wouldn't suggest any kind of weird colors there because it just wouldn't make sense. Like if you were thinking, oh, I'll, I'll put green around there. I wouldn't do that. I would keep it like white because you've got this nice thick white around the black oval here. So maybe do that and then re-upload this. And it looks like you've only got your Google Plus over here on your social media. And that's because, uh, especially if this is an older channel, YouTube just puts that in there automatically. <laughs> So make sure that that's updated to include uh, your Facebook and your Twitter and all that stuff, Deb. And you have your little uh, profile picture here. You can't really read what it says in this little circle. So you might want to consider making that circle larger, even though you kind of lose the, the effect that it's a flower right there. But, you know, maybe instead of using this image, create a label on top of a floral label itself. In other words, um, the label similar to how you've got this black and white label here. Well, maybe it's the shape of a flower and then you have your text on that so that it's more easily seen. Just a suggestion for that. So I hope some of that helped. Um, you, okay, well, good, Deb. <laughs> well, I don't know why I started calling you Deborah. That's crazy. Oh, oh, well, hey, let me tell you, before I learned Photoshop, Deb, I'm telling you, I was lost in Photoshop because it has layers and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, now, YouTube does make it easy if you have Photoshop because they have the template available. But, yeah, you do have to kind of figure out how to how to do all those layering and, and techniques and things. Before I learned Photoshop, though, I used PZAP, which I showed earlier here. Uh, pretty much I use just PZAP or PicMonkey. And it's just pretty much drag and drop. Uh, the, a lot of people use GIMP, G-I-M-P. I don't really, I've never, I think I've used it one time and I didn't like it. But you can give that a shot. Just kind of give it a little bit of, of practice. And um, once I learned Photoshop though, it it man, it really opened up a whole world for me. Because that's how I wound up getting into making digital graphics. And I never thought that I would ever be doing that because I've always relied on other people to make my banners and things. But now I can at least make my own banners. So that part is great. I do bottle cap images and things like that now. I would have never been able to do that before if I had I not really learned Photoshop. But I put it off so long just because it was so scary. <laughs> Oh, good. So, yeah, use PicMonkey. I really like it because it is similar to PZAP in a lot of ways, but it has different elements that I like sometimes about it. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Now, wait a minute. It's not going to let me sign in there. Okay. But if you're using PicMonkey, then you are familiar with it. I'm not going to be able to show it here without having to log in. Um it's got a lot of different templates that I like using, especially the back to school. Whenever I'm trying to do things for my classes that I teach, I like to go in there and use some of their elements that they have in it. Cause they have frames and stickers and textures and things like that, that makes sense for school related stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, then there's also, you know, there's so many different ways that you can go about messing with graphics, but I will have to say, Photoshop is big time up there because once you can learn Photoshop and get comfortable in it, then it opens up a whole slew of opportunities for you, especially if in your case, Deb, you're doing stamping, you can get involved in digital stamps. Um, you know, that might be something that interests you down the road. So if you are interested in that, maybe make a point to learn. There's a lot, there's a ton of free Photoshop um, training and everything, of course, on YouTube here, but you can go to places like Creative Live or Craftsy.com and take classes to learn different techniques in Photoshop if you're interested in that. They also have digital scrapbooking classes at Craftsy, so you might be interested in that. If I can think about it, I'll try to post a link 
for that because I know there's I think five or six classes involved in that if that's interesting to you. So let me go back over here to my Crafty Creators homepage and see on my own crazy channel here when I talk about what's in your about section let me click on mine because I don't think I did that earlier you can see that I have the social media links there but I have like I'm trying to have a conversation with anyone that is you know vaguely curious about what crafty creators actually is so I have that information here another thing that would be useful if you do live streams and you're trying to do it on a schedule you could post your schedule here in your description area you can do all sorts of things here in this description area and not everyone bothers to click on it. They really are the ones that are either fellow creators trying to, you know, see how someone else does their channel or it's someone that, Hey, I really kind of like this channel. So I want to learn more about them. So just kind of keep that in mind with whatever information you put there, your discussion section. I don't know if any of you all have ever had this issue where you try to have conversations over here and no one ever posts. <laughs> it's kind of, I think YouTube was going to phase that section out because no one ever uses it, but it, it still is on here for me. So periodically you'll, you'll see, I post in, you know, comments and stuff that way. If you want to have a conversation with me here on YouTube, you can, especially since they're, they're getting rid of the direct messaging feature here at YouTube. So this would be your option to have a conversation with people other than just leaving comments back and forth on specific videos. Um, the playlists area, I know I showed this before, but I have my created playlist, which, you know, you can do eternal scrolling here, or you can go through here in the sections. So by sections, um, I have created like a filming, editing, and channel tips, but then I put four different playlists from the bulk of my playlist in that particular section that has something to do with filming, editing, or channel tips. So like your marketing Mondays would be your channel tips. Your photo and video art would be your filming and editing. Your wavelength Wednesdays because it's kind of a broad, um, there's no telling what topics we're going to talk about during those live streams. I just pop that in there as well. Your YouTube channel tips, of course, are then the, the channel tips. And then you've got things like for artists and crafters, um, fab fashion and things that are specific to those topics. But these are individual playlists that are under the umbrella of crafters. Same thing with artists and fashion. So I hope that makes sense. Let me click on my customized channel again so I can show you where it says add section because I don't believe I showed that earlier. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go back here to home. Okay. So I'm at the home area and you see every time I scroll because I am the owner of crafty creators, every time I scroll over an area, I have a little pencil icon. If I keep scrolling down to the very bottom of my home page, I have an add section button. If I click that, it asks me, okay, well, what do you want to add? I can select content via specific videos. I can do specific playlists. I can have channels or I can have other activities. And I don't even really know what the recent activities and recent posts would be unless like your discussion area, if you had a lot going on over there. You can also choose how you want it to show if you want it to be vertically or horizontally. I prefer the horizontal look because it just, to me, it looks a lot cleaner versus having an, an eternal scroll downward because many people won't do that. So here is a great um, way if you wanted to have maybe a section where you add just your live streams, you could click on here and say live now, upcoming, or past live streams and have that be a, a section all its own. You know, whatever, whatever floats your boat as far as what you want to show here on your home screen. But you can also do that for your different areas in your channel. And if you wanted to um, look and change whatever you want to show to your new visitors versus your returning subscribers, this is also the area you can change that. So you just hit your, your pencil icon. You can change this to feature content. Or you can say latest upload, which is what I have for new visitors. Mine is my specific 
uh, what I call a trailer for this channel. So I have that set up to play um, either the uh, trailer or you can remove that trailer and play a specific video or your latest update. But for new visitors, I go ahead and, and choose the, the what I'm calling a channel trailer. So you can just change that up and you can also, you know, change this up all the time. You don't have to leave it stagnant. Um, that's why I just go ahead and let for returning subscribers, they get to see whatever my latest upload is versus a featured content. Now, where that might be different is if you have a need to um, maybe you've got like a sponsored video that you have that you always want people to see every time they come to your channel. So maybe like a commercial. So if you have um, let's say I don't know if Deb is still here. <laughs> she might not be. But Deb, um, since you've just gotten into the Stampin' Up! stuff as a rep, and let's say you create yourself a Stampin' Up! commercial. You may want that commercial, even though it's not a channel trailer, you might want that promo to always play every time someone clicks on your channel. So here would be the area that you could do that. You would upload that channel promo, I mean, not channel promo, but you would upload that Stampin' Up! promo and um, that would be in your whole list of videos. But when you go to click on your pencil icon here, you could click on feature content and select that Stampin' Up! promo to always play versus your latest upload. So it's up to you. I mean, it, it's however you want to do it. Same here for, for new visitors. If you don't have a channel trailer, I suggest to go ahead and create yourself one. It doesn't have to be elaborate. I think this little video that I made might be a, like a minute and six seconds or something like that. It's very short. You can even make them up to 20 and 30 seconds. Um, marketing influencers, they all talk about having a 30 to 45 second commercial type channel intro. So I would kind of stick to something short and sweet. That's just my suggestion. Uh, for me, you know, I just kind of make whatever it is that I like and <laughs> hope for the best. Not not really that. I mean, I do put work into what I'm trying to create. I use Canva a lot to create um, a lot of videos for this channel here. But in my own Sparkle by Monica channel, of course, that's usually tutorials where I'm making jewelry or I'm doing paper crafts or maybe I'm making a candy bouquet or something like that. So I have a lot of varied content over at that channel, which is hard for me uh, to make a, a short channel trailer so far. That's why you see that Sparkle Tail to Fairy Tail <laughs> video over there. Here, I do have that little... Um, Welcome to Crafty Creators, and I'm, I'm kind of using that as a channel trailer. So, you know, just keep in mind whatever it is that your focus is. Uh, I would definitely say to create your banners to where it's a nice, clear picture that people can see. And don't use uh, graphics from Google, that, especially the ones that might have the watermarks and things that might have a, a copyright issue to it. Make sure that you're using royalty-free graphics and that it is not going to be something that's going to be too small a size that will get pixelated when you pop it in here to your YouTube channel art because you want it to be nice and clear. And another benefit of using Photoshop is that YouTube also has that channel template, which shows you um, how to be able to... Whoops. I lost my screen, how to be able to create it. And what, what I like about it is um, you have a large image. I think the YouTube size, oh man, I've already forgot what the YouTube size is. It's like 19, 1920 by something. And then if you're looking at it on a mobile view, it's 1546 by I believe 500 or maybe 400. So it, the channel template shows you a bunch of different lines. Let me see if I can pull that up here because I think... I think I may have that um, here in YouTube. Let me pull it up. I believe I have it right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me click back. Let me pull up the chat box. Hey, Deb, you say you're still here. I think you're the only one here with me, by the way. So thank you for sticking it out. <laughs> I'm kind of a, a boring Monica today because I haven't, I don't feel well. So I didn't feel like being on camera, but I didn't want to bypass having the live stream. So that's why I'm doing this screencast here. I appreciate you being here. 
If you can see this, let me know. I'm looking at the channel art template where it shows all the different measurements and the lines here for how your your uh, different views will be. Like it, it's got a desktop maximum, 2560 by 423, a tablet, 1855 by 423, desktop minimum and mobile, 1546 by 423. Can you see that, Deb? Ah, pooey. Okay, well, I don't know. Um, bummer. So what I'll do, um, Deb, since you're in the Facebook group, I will post this. Uh, the, it's actually for Photoshop, but I mean, at least it gives you the, the measurements and everything. If you use GIMP or PZAP or PicMonkey, like you, you were saying that you use, that way you can see um, the lines and everything here and then try to tweak it for whatever, whatever you're going to use. I will do that in the Facebook group so you'll have that and then also link it to where you can download the channel template if you want to fool around with Photoshop. Um, sorry about that. I was hoping you might be able to see that. I don't know how to make it. It should it should do that. Hmm. Yeah, it won't let me change my view either. So, bummer. All right. Well, I'll do that. I'll just post it in the Facebook group. That way you can see it and you can change your, your banners. And if, if Stacy from Crafty Mommy 85, she might want to do the same thing. Uh, she's not familiar with Photoshop, at least. If you use the free softwares that are out there, you'll have the dimensions that you need. The biggest thing that I despise about YouTube and this channel art thing is that you have to use a huge image. So I know you can't see it, but I'm going to tell you. It's 2560 by 1440. And that is the, the biggest that they want your image to be so that if someone's viewing your YouTube channel on a television, that your channel art will not be distorted. So the 2560 by 1440, they want something that large. However, down here in the very middle of that big, huge image is where all this other, all these other measurements are for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And it is actually what I'm seeing when I look at everyone's channel here. So like you're seeing crafty creators right here in the very middle. And it's got the Facebook, the Twitter, the Google plus and the Instagram on either side of that. And then just, it's like a little thin strip here. Okay. Well that is because that's the desktop view. So it cuts out a whole huge amount of image because I'm not on a television. So I don't really, I don't really care for that um, problem here with YouTube. Oh goodness. I think I just lost it. There we go. Yeah. I don't care for that. Um, as far as here, you've got to create this ginormous image, but you only get to see a sliver of it on the bulk of the devices that people use the television. I mean, many people aren't watching YouTube on televisions. They're using their tablet, their iPhone, you know, their smartphone, whatever device they've got their desktop. So <laughs> that's something to keep in mind as far as how it gets pixelated and distorted. But if you, if you find something like, like let's say you change whatever your image is and you're using GIMP or you're using PicMonkey or PZAP, as long as you get something that looks good in that biggest size that I just gave you, the 2560 by whatever that was, 1443. It will show up nicely when you go to up upload it here. Um, so that's the biggest thing. The other thing that's nice about the channel template that I'll have at the Facebook group is that you'll know where to position what you want people to see on the bulk of the devices that they're actually using. So for instance, like my crafty creators right here in the very middle of the banner, if I place that higher or lower in that big ginormous image that I had, you would never see it. And so it wouldn't make sense to most people viewing unless they were watching it on the television. So that's something to kind of keep in mind as far as where you place your stuff. All right. So let me get back here to the Google Hangouts. I am going to um, click out of here now, hopefully. If it will let me, I don't know. It may not let me. I'm trying to click off of here. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I really appreciate the the visitors today. I'm so sorry that you know this is still a, a new channel, and um, I don't think a lot of people are joining the groups because they're involved in so many other groups. And also, since the apocalypse stuff and all this small YouTuber business has has kind of dwindled down a little bit, and there's been infighting with multiple groups and things. I think a lot of people are kind of shying away from groups and you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, time that you've got to spend in trying to, you know, deal with being involved in groups. If it's stuff where, you know, you're not really interested, but now for me, I'm generally interested in crafts and, you know, trying to support my fellow crafty creators and all that stuff. So for me, it's great. Um, if, if it's interesting to you guys, I really appreciate it. If you know of anyone that might be interested in uh, being involved in the group, please feel free to share that along. And if not, that's, that's fine too. If you are finding some value in it, I'm thrilled about that. If there's any suggestions that you have for me to make, you know, do other screencasts or any other topics that you want to talk about during a live stream or even when I post the videos just straight to, to YouTube. Yeah. Let me know. Um, either tell me on social media, send me an email or join the group and, you know, leave me a comment or something. Um, Deb, I hope that the information that I was able to give you was helpful and Stacy, I know you weren't able to be here, but if you're watching this in the replay, I hope that's helpful to you. If you have any issues or whatnot, if you're trying to tweak your banner, let me know. Oh yeah. And still the new, yeah. Well, ah, uh, Deb, you're so sweet. You're very welcome. I feel like I have just kind of fallen down here the last little bit. Cause ever since I got Willie, um, you know, he's kept me really busy, but then also we're trying to get our house remodeled, uh, you know, finished up so that if we do wind up moving to Kentucky by the end of the year, we're not going to be stuck with all these last minute, um, you know, remodeling projects here, although I'm sure we'll still have something. And then my health started going. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that, but I just, I didn't want to skip the stream because I know if I start skipping, you know, multiple streams, then everybody's going to be like, well, I don't know. Are we going to have a stream this week or not? <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it regular on that front, but I hope that you're finding some value in it. And I'm just having fun trying to find things that I think would interest me. Oh yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you're, you know, you're dealing with things with your mother and I hope that everything will work out with that because I know that that also just zaps you of your energy. I know with uh, my husband's mother, she is, I mean, she's doing well. She's doing a lot better than she was last year when we went on that road trip back in May. We were expecting, you know, that because she's all by herself now, we were expecting that she was going to be very frail but she's working out and she's going on hikes and uh, volunteering for the Red Cross and everything. So she's doing a lot better than than what we thought. Uh, but it was still very worrisome for my husband. Yeah. Well, and, you know, he's so far away from his family. And especially with her being by herself, he can't just run over and help her, you know, if, if the gutter gets clogged. Or, you know, like when we were home in May, there was it rained all week. And he had to help her with some stuff on a rental property that she had. And had he not been there, you know, she would have had to hire somebody to do that or try to do it herself, you know. So he, that kind of stuff worries him. If we move to Kentucky, he'll be closer, which will be, you know, a lot better on his stress level. Oh, uh, she's 89. I'm sorry. Well, I think his mother is 72 mm -hmm. now. 72? or 71 or 72. She's right, right around there, but she's lost her mom, her dad, and now her husband all in the last three years, just right back to back. So, I mean, that's the big, big thing there, but also she's by herself. So, you know, he, he worries about her and it just really takes a toll. So I hope if we get to go to Kentucky, mm -hmm. that we'll only be three or four hours away and, um, you know, he'll be able to, to spend some time with her and help with things because that's the biggest thing right now since she is by herself there's no one there to help her with anything but um i know that has nothing to do with crafty <laughs> crafts and arts and crafts and things but um 
I hope that your mom does better, Deb. And I know that you're really busy. I do appreciate you being here. I know that, you know, there's so many different live streams and everything, though, too, that it's hard to pick a time. So my philosophy is I picked the time that was best for me. And if anyone has the time to stop in, then that's great. And if not, I'll leave it up as a replay so they can watch it whenever they want to. <laughs> Because I do know that there are, are a lot of different live streams where people just, you know, they jump on there so that they can see all who, who all's in the streams and support each other that way. And that's great. Uh, this is more for informational purposes anyway. But, you know, I like to be able to talk to you guys in real time if, if I can see you. But, yep, that's how you have to do it. So, all right. I think I'm going to cut it off now. I'm a little bit over the 130 limit. I'm sorry. I kind of, I kind of got distracted there. If you have any questions, though, um, feel free to leave them in the comments whenever this becomes live. If you haven't already done so, please put a like on this and subscribe to the Crafty Creators channel. I believe that is all I have today and next week, provided that nothing crazy happens with my health or this house or Willie the kitten. I will plan to be here on the same time. If you have any issues or whatnot, that's the time to bring them is on our Wavelength Wednesdays. And uh, if you've not already joined the Facebook group, please do so. And ha have a craftacular day, y'all. Bye.